This is Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're in the Inland Empire today, and we are joined by Connie Leva. She is a member of the California State Senate. And sadly, um, she lost some constituents recently. Uh, she represents portions of San Bernardino, including the Inland Regional Center, where the catastrophe occurred, where we lost 14 of our own, 21 in the hospital. Senator, how are you? Well, how I am, are you? I am fine. Mm -hmm. I get to go home to mm -hmm. my family right. every day, and my family comes home to me every mm -hmm. day. Um, we're focused on the victims and the victims' families. Right. Fourteen people did not go home on that terrible day, uh, but hundreds more are affected, all the mm -hmm. family members that are left behind. If I can, I'd like to go back and kind of talk about that day. Sure. I understand you coincidentally were with the mayor of San Bernardino. Yes. You were at a transportation meeting. That is correct. And so how did you and the mayor and others learn what was going on? Well, social media is an amazing oh, yes. thing. Uh, we were I was there with some of my staff at mm. the uh, transportation right. sandbag meeting, as was the mayor and other mayors, and people's phones started going right. off and we started getting news and information that there was an active shooter situation in San Bernardino. San Bernardino. San Bernardino. I, mean, I know. I've lived here my whole <laughs> life. It was shocking. It was shocking. Yeah. Uh, and then when uh, we heard that the, which was thought to be three gunmen, right. uh, ultimately right. only two, uh, they thought they were on the move north um, up Waterman, which would have Toward put you? them towards where mm -hmm. we were. Mm -hmm. So at that time, they asked everyone, they adjourned the meeting, asked us all to leave. Uh, the sheriff's department was outstanding. They had their uh, mm -hmm. weapons drawn, escorted everyone out, made sure we got safely in our cars. I, I watched many press conferences, and I saw that you were present. And completely appropriate. <laughs> I, I can feel myself actually welling up a bit. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you become a, con a consoler? You know, how, how do you talk to these people who are your constituents? You, you may know them, you may recognize them, you may not know them, but they're going to turn to you. You just, for myself personally mm -hmm. and for my staff, we just try and think about how would we want to be treated? How mm -hmm. would we want someone to treat our family? We want to be respectful of privacy, but we want to be present if that's what they want us to do. And do you find that they want you there? It's a general statement but no no, no. Okay. we found that uh, most of the calls we've gotten mm -hmm. um, are from other constituents um, most of the families seem to want their privacy I as they see. should what as about the families who have surviving victims because that's a little different it's very in different. some ways having a senator visit could be uplifting. Right, and we have talked about that mm -hmm. at my office. We haven't set anything up yet, mm -hmm. but I would be happy to do that. I just don't want anyone to ever feel that I am trying to do something for publicity. No, I understand. I want to be helpful, uh, and, and that, that's really what I want to do. But if I can visit and that would make someone happy, I would always do that. I know that prior to your entry into the Senate, you worked for a local labor union. Yes. Which I understand personally lost several Yes. That particular union? SEIU, I work for United Food and Commercial Workers okay. Union. We represent all the grocery store workers. Okay. SEIU 721 uh, lost 10 members. Teamsters uh, 1932 lost So it's, it's lost your brothers three. and sisters. It's my brothers and right. sisters. Um, How are they doing? How is union leadership doing? How are union members doing? I mean, look, everyone's suffering, but... Right. You know, there is that fraternity sorority feeling. Oh, unions yeah. are awesome. Mm -hmm. I always tell people that you have your uh, your chronological, right. excuse right. me, your, your biological right. family, exactly. and then you have your union mm -hmm. family, and your union family will be with you through thick and thin and mm -hmm. will always have your back. So I know that both of these unions are helping those members and their families to deal with this, this tragedy. So I know that we are now looking to the future. And I want to get a sense, how do you as a leader in the community play a part in the future? I mean, let's remember, San Bernardino, a city that in the 70s was called an all-American city, yeah. in the 2010s went bankrupt, yeah. and now has suffered this horrible tragedy. I know your district includes larger right. portions, but still, I mean, right. it's one of yours. But San Bernardino has been somewhat of a focus for my office and, and a focus in that, how do we help San Bernardino? How do mm. we pull them out of bankruptcy? How do we rebuild? Mm. San Bernardino has a lot to offer. They have Indeed. wonderful people. They have Indeed. families who have been there for generations. So I think that's one part is how mm. do we help them rebuild, which we were working on prior to this tragedy. Now we have to work on how do we help this community rebuild from this tragedy mm -hmm. and come out with love and not with hate. And, and I want to talk about mm -hmm. love and hate because what we know is that the perpetrators 
were likely uh, subscribing to radical Islamist views. Yes. And it's hard to deny that there's a lot of fear surrounding Islam. Right. In Paris, the perpetrators were part of a radical Islamist movement. Many of us don't know Muslims. Right. Not because we don't want to know them, we just don't we know just don't, them. That's right. And so there's so much apprehension, maybe, is the word. Yes. You know, we may see a woman walking around in hijab. Right. We may not even know the word hijab. That's right. How are you trying to work on that love-hate dichotomy? Well, I, I see my job as an elected official mm -hmm. is to help calm people, ease their fears. Fear drives people to do things right. that they shouldn't do. Uh, to teach people and for me to be an example as an elected official mm -hmm. to help people move forward, to understand different cultures, to understand different people. Just because someone doesn't look like me doesn't right. mean they're a bad person. We know there is a presidential candidate, Donald mm -hmm. Trump, who is calling to exclude Muslims from entering the country. We are no pe we know people agree with that. Yeah. We know there are people that are horrified by that. It, it's because <sighs> when you are on TV and you are given a platform mm -hmm. and you are allowed to spew hate and fear mongering, you are setting the stage. Mm -hmm. I would love to see media stop covering him. Mm -hmm. I would love to see us as a country say, you know what, this is not what we're about. And we are going to cover people who are factual, people mm -hmm. who don't say things that incite hate and fear, and talk about real people and real issues so that we don't create a culture of fear. I, I it may be premature to discuss this, but if I may, uh, we know that California is considered to have amongst the strictest gun measures mm -hmm. in the nation. Yes. So the question is constantly reappearing. What do we do about access to guns, right. the types of guns, the types of ammunition? Should we have this conversation? Yes, I think we should have the conversation, mm -hmm. and I think that we um, in the legislature will have the conversation when we reconvene in January. Mm -hmm. I think we want to be very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. We already do have, as you said, some of the strictest mm -hmm. gun laws, and we want to make sure we don't have a knee-jerk reaction. Right. Uh, I have no problem with the Second Amendment. I, I, think, I think about your yeah. district. I mean, your district right. is kind of purplish. Right, part, yes. You know? and yeah. so I do not own any guns. Which is However, here there. I don't have a problem with people owning guns, but I really don't see a reason for any person, any average citizen to have an assault weapon. Unless you're going to war, what is the need for an assault weapon? And what we've learned is the perpetrators purportedly received weapons illegal in California by obtaining them through sister right. states. And right. think about it, we're not even like the East Coast where states are on top of each right, other. Right, we're a little, we're a little yeah. spaced but out. But yet somehow they got yeah. to Arizona or Nevada or whatever it is. So. And that's yeah. the unfortunate part. Mm -hmm. I think there, where there's a will, there's a way. Mm -hmm. And even when there is a you know bad will or ill will, people are going to find a way. Oh, so part of what please. we need to do is not just look at, focus on our gun laws, it's focus on how we treat each other as a society. Mm -hmm. We have really done a backslide uh, in my 48 years. I feel like mm -hmm. we're, how far have we really come? But I wonder, I think about the event at the 66 Stadium in San mm -hmm. Diego. I mean, that was mm -hmm. um, inspiring. It was fabulous. You feel as if maybe yes. we're coming together Together, yes. that, that we're starting to treat yes. each other with love and kindness? I always think out of something bad, mm -hmm. even a tragedy as horrible as this, that good will come from it. Mm -hmm. And my hope is, is that people who believe like you and I, mm -hmm. that, we, that we are all one race, the human race, that we can come together and find a way to be kind to one another. Kindness isn't weakness, but being kind to someone is just the right thing to do. State Senator Connie Leva joins us. I'm Brad Pomerantz. This is Charter Local Edition.